in the aftermath of the Deontay Wilder Tyson Fury fight, Fury had kind of turned the tide of public opinion in his favor. There were so many people who were putting Tyson Fury up on a pedestal and saying he is the true king of the division. He beat Deontay Wilder. This is a real fighting man. But since that time, Tyson Fury did the ESPN deal and subsequently walked away from the rematch with Deontay Wilder. That right there hurt him in terms of his reputation with the fans. And now he's coming out with all kinds of absurd statements. You see, I've already exposed the whole lineage going back to John L. Sullivan and a lot of people have caught on now. His lineage as lineal champion only goes back to Vladimir Klitschko. All this hundred years and John L. Sullivan stuff, nonsense. There is a difference between a consensus champion and a lineal champion. And there are some people who are being extremely dishonest in trying to conflate the two. No, when a new lineage starts, of course, you have to find a consensus champion and then start the lineage with them. But a consensus champion is not always the same as a lineal champion. For example, Sergey Kovalev and then Andre Ward was viewed as the consensus champion in the light heavyweight division a couple of years ago, even though Adonis Stevenson was the lineal champion. Mike Tyson, many decades ago, I've mentioned this, was viewed as the consensus champion before he fought Michael Spinks, but Spinks was regarded as the lineal champion. Mike Tyson was a firm favorite with the bookies and with the public going into the Spinks fight, even though Spinks was lineal. I could go on. But Tyson Fury's lineage only goes back to Klitschko. The fact that he's been consistently lying about this 100 years and John L. Sullivan stuff and people have caught on to it has also gone against him. The Tom Schwartz fight has gone against him because people know, especially after the things that I and others have pointed out, that Schwartz is suspect to say the least. This is a guy who tried to quit against Senad Gashi in the second round. That's not a good sign. This is a guy who isn't even the best heavyweight in Germany. And let's face it, Germany is not exactly producing a whole heap of quality heavyweights at this current time, is it? So Fury is actually doing himself a disservice with the PR job that he's doing at the moment. But at the end of the day, Fury is trying to capitalize and make money out of his situation. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to take advantage of the position whereby he is in his own mind and in his own words and in the words of his promoters, the real champion, but he doesn't have any of the obligations of an actual champion. So calling himself lineal, whatever, you don't have to have, you don't have to fight any mandatories. You don't have to fight anybody in the top 10. You don't have to fight, you know, Anybody who's ranked by any of the sanctioned bodies, you don't have to stay active. You don't have to, you know, fight this champion, this uh, contender by this particular deadline or it goes to, you don't have to do any of that. There's no quality control when it comes to who Tyson Fury fights as the so-called lineal champion. He can just do what he he tells you himself. He can fight whoever he wants, whenever he wants. And when a fighter is in that position, like George Foreman was back in the 90s, when a fighter is in that position, they're in a position where they can actually abuse the situation. Michael Spinks did it. He vacated his world title instead of fighting Tony Tucker. And he took on a couple of jokers. <laughs> That's what he did. George Foreman did it. After he beat Michael Mora, he started taking on jokers, Crawford Grimsley and Lou Savarese and all these people, instead of the real fighters and the the true champions at the time, the Mike Tysons, the Lennox Lewises, the Evander Holyfields. Foreman didn't fight them guys at that time. He'd obviously fought Holyfield years earlier, but at, at the time after he beat Michael Mora, he weren't trying to fight Holyfield then. He weren't trying to fight Lennox Lewis. He weren't trying to fight Mike Tyson. He weren't trying to fight Riddick Bowe. So that lineal thing is something historically which is often abused. And Tyson Fury might, I hope he's not, but he might be going down that same road 
or he's making a bit of a circus of it. But judging by the public reaction to the Tom Schwartz fight, that might not work for him. And ESPN might tell him, you know what? The gig's up. We're going to have to put you in, with, in there with somebody good. <laughs> this Schwartz uh, show bombed. Maybe the BT Sport pay-per-view figures are going to tank. And they'll say, nah, we can't continue with this charade. We have to put it in, in there with somebody with a pulse next time. So we'll see where it goes. But Tyson Fury at this point in time and Frank Warren and Bob Arum, they have got a very, very tough sell when it comes to this show and this fight. Because most of the boxing public appear to know exactly what this is. And, you know, one of the things that Tyson Fury said as well, I think it was in this interview, is he said that he doesn't have to fight. Uh, I, actually, I'm not, I don't think it was this interview. It might have been another one. But it was definitely one of the interviews that he did at the presser today. And he said that he doesn't have to fight for any of the belts. The, the belt holders all need to fight each other. And then they get the chance to fight him, the lineal champion. And people rightly pointed out, who the hell did Tom Schwartz fight? Or what the hell did Tom Schwartz do to get a crack at the lineal champion? You know, Tyson Fury's acting like Wilder and Joshua have to prove themselves in order to get a crack at him. What on earth has Schwartz done to prove himself to get a crack? Absolutely absurd. And Frank Warren, for example, has been saying that Tyson Fury is a bigger star in the UK now than Anthony Joshua. Well, we'll be able to compare because Tyson Fury is fighting in the, in the United States against Schwartz. AJ is fighting in the United States against Andy Ruiz. So it's a like for like comparison. Let's have a look at the pay-per-view numbers for AJ Ruiz, and then we can look at the pay-per-view numbers for Fury versus Schwartz and see who does better. Because Frank Warren hasn't been saying that Fury is as big a draw in the UK as AJ. He's been saying that Fury is a bigger draw right now in the UK than AJ. And as Tyson Fury's dad said a couple months back about AJ, uh, he said that AJ could fight a dog in the street and sell out Wembley. Well, let's see if Tyson Fury can do the same. Let's see if Tyson Fury can fight a dog in the street in the shape of Tom Schwartz and sell out an arena, do good numbers on pay-per-view, on BT Sport. Let's see. <laughs> but it does appear at this moment that the public are not really going for it. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below about everything I've talked about in this video. It's happening, I'm out. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week, covering a wide variety of controversial topics, as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.